What's up guys and good morning. It's actually the evening for us right now. We are cutting off for the end of the day. I'm a little bit dirty, so I'm actually getting ready to jump in the shower right now. And then today we're actually gonna be doing a really fun Q&A. First I got a shower and I'm actually using this new soap called Blue Midnight from Jack Black. And this portion of today's video is sponsored by Jack Black. Trent has been loving Jack Black's new limited edition Blue Midnight body and hair cleanser. And honestly, I have too. It's the perfect cozy scent for date night and relaxing together after a long day. With fragrance notes of black pepper, mandarin, French lavender, and driftwood, gently wash away dirt and sweat without over drying your skin. From the number one men's body care brand, it contains aloe vera to soothe, vitamin B5 to soften and smooth, and glycerin to moisturize and balance, all with a masculine and magnetic scent. Now that I'm a little bit more cleaned up, honestly, the one thing that I have to say about Jack Black is that I absolutely love the black pepper and lavender fragrance. It's like a very manly, musky smell, and I love it. I'm gonna get dressed and we're gonna get ready for the Q&A, but if you guys wanna get your own Jack Black, or it's actually a really good gift if you have any men in your life that you're looking for some holiday presents for, this is definitely a great option. You can click the link in our description or get it exclusively at getjackblack.com. So thanks again to Jack Black for sponsoring this portion of today's video. I'm gonna get dressed and I'll see you downstairs in a few. All right guys, I am completely showered and ready now for our Q&A. It has been quite a while since we've done a video like this where we take input from our viewers and answer their questions. So today, We've got some juicy ones. I feel like this is an annual tradition to us. We do like one Q&A a year, and every year the questions are totally different because what's been happening throughout the year has changed so much. Yeah. We put out uh, a feeler on Instagram to see like what questions you guys have, and there's some really good <laughs> ones. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. Leo is teething hardcore, so hopefully we have a couple minutes of some quiet. We'll see how long this lasts before we have to put him to bed, but. Trent is gonna kick this thing off with the first question. Trent, what you got? All right, so I've been scrolling through a lot of the questions that everybody had on Instagram, and the first one that I found that, that I think is good is, uh, maybe it's not good, I don't know. What is it? Well, it says, are your grandparents from your mom's side of the family? Love them, by the way. Aww. We and love them too. My grandparents are from my mom's side of the family. We actually answered this type of question in a previous video, and that was like, where is Trent's dad? And I've never met my dad, so since I don't know who my dad is, there's no one else on that side of the family that I know anything about, so my grandparents are from my mom's side. Will you guys do reunions with other YouTubers? Oh, I love that question. Yes, we would absolutely love to. We have definitely kept in touch with a lot of our YouTuber friends. It would be so much fun to hang out with all of them. Um, we've talked with basically all of them about when is the next time we can travel together and go on adventures together, and the answer to that is, Sometime soon, <laughs> we have such a crazy schedule that it's just kind of hard to plan it's right now. It's not really just us that has a crazy schedule. Yeah, it's like yeah. anybody that's doing YouTube yeah. also has a crazy schedule yeah. and things that they've planned out. And like, it's just hard to make things line up, not to mention most of these people live, you know, a continent away or half a country away. So like, it's hard to make these things line up, but that is in the plans and our dream of ours is to reunite with a bunch of different YouTubers and, and do videos together where we've had fun in the past, so. I almost like wish it were less chaotic living in a van, but I feel like the answer would still be the same if we weren't stationary. Like our yeah. schedules are just crazy. Yeah, it's true. How come you never got a backhoe and a bucket attachment for your tractor? Now I have been waiting to dig into this question for a really long time. I get questions all the time, people are like, Trent, get your tractor out, use the front end loader, get a backhoe attachment. Every attachment for that tractor is like five to $10,000. Yeah, like when I bought that tractor, I literally bought it for no purpose other than to blow snow. Most of the digging that we have to do requires a mini excavator, like something that's large. So as far as the tractor I mean, goes, I plan on trading that tractor in and getting a bigger tractor that can actually do more with the attachments and maybe I'll get more attachments at that point. But for right now, what everybody talks about our tractor is not a tractor. It's a riding 
enclosed snowblower. That's all that it does. All right, the next question that we have drummed up is, did Allie go to college? And if so, what did she study? Aw, it feels like a really long time ago, but I did. I went to the University of Maryland. I grew up in DC, so Maryland was like uh, an easy choice. Um, and I studied public health and pre-med with a minor in French. Because you wanted to be a doctor? Yeah, I did. And then I ended up uh, working in public health and working in healthcare quality improvement. And I lived in France and learned to speak French and uh, did a bunch of traveling and, and health stuff on my own for a few years. And all of that led me out west and to Utah where I met Trent. So if you go to college, you can meet a guy like me. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> <laughs> all right, the next question is, what is your best advice for a happy and healthy relationship slash marriage? Uh, I'm very interested to hear what your answer is. <laughs> <laughs> Why me? Uh, I would say that communication is your number one, I don't know what the word is. Priority. The, your number one priority. It yeah. is the most important part yeah. of a relationship. It's not how pretty someone is, it's not how good they are at something, it is literally how well you can communicate with each other. And I can easily say that I have never had a relationship in my entire life, whether it be a family or a girlfriend or a friend, anything like that, that has as good and as thorough of communication as Allie and I have. Leo, are you communicating right what now? What do you say? What are you communicating? What do you say? I think especially as our relationship has changed over the years and we've gone from dating to married to having a baby, things have been, especially in the last year, very, very difficult. And I don't always know if that comes across on camera um, because we try to keep the videos positive and uplifting, but it has been a really difficult year for our relationship, honestly. And I think it all comes down to good communication. And it's not always about saying nice, things. It's about saying honest things. And I'm so grateful to have been going through this entire experience with Trent. There's literally no one else I would do this with other than Trent. Um, the YouTube thing, as well as the marriage and the raising kids thing, it's really hard. And uh, he's right. It really just comes down to good communication and maybe like a date night once in a while. <laughs> That's our pizza. Should I put the pizza in? Yeah, it comes down to communication and pizza. <laughs> <laughs> All right, our next question is, have you got any plans for a garden? And then they also said, hello from the UK. Hi, UK. We do have plans for a garden. We would love to have a garden. I would love to plant and grow every food that we eat and have like a miraculous homestead. But for anybody that actually grows food or has a homestead, you understand that's not possible for us because we have nine months of winter where we live. Now, yeah. we do have plans to have a greenhouse where we can grow a lot of food, and that is like kind of on the back burner until we're done building all of the other things that we have on our plate. Which probably leads into the next question. Are you going to continue to build other things? Of course. <laughs> I, li I like building. It's like where I thrive. I've like, I just, I really enjoy it. We also love to travel, but we love building and creating things. And so, yes, there is a lot of things in the future that we're gonna be building. I think now we're gonna take a quick pause to give Leo some dinner and put him down for the night. When the morning standing at your door. The, morning standing at your door. the next question is, Trent, were you living in Massachusetts in the early 90s? And the answer is absolutely not. My guess is there's a doppelganger or somebody that they thought looked like me or seemed like me or they're remembering somebody from their past that they thought was me. And the answer is no. I've only been to Massachusetts once and we got two extremely uh, expensive parking tickets yeah. within like four hours of each other. There's no parking in Boston. And we've never been back. <laughs> Moving on. Will you get farm animals on your land when the building is done? A hundred percent yes. I definitely want some chickens. The only issue or like complication I could foresee is that we still want to be able to travel and having animals on a property and then like leaving them for extended yeah. periods of time is not really fair to the animals. You so you gotta hire a farm hand. Yeah, I think that's like still TBD, but we would love to incorporate some farm animals and still be able to travel a little bit. We'll see how that all shakes out. 
I think chickens, absolutely. Yeah. You could, we could probably get away with like having somebody tend to the chickens. Also, it's extremely difficult to do a Q and A with a baby. <laughs> Our life is very different now that we have the baby. But I would love to have some chickens and maybe like some alpacas, something oh. that could withstand the cold and the temperatures up here. That'd be and cool. then maybe we could like shave them and harvest their wool or whatever the alpaca fur is called. Some alpaca sweaters, I don't that's know. cool. It, it's like, it's that or a cow that can withstand cold that we could milk and have like fresh milk. I don't know. They like, have those like really shaggy, really it's a cool. Yak, I a yak, A yak would be cool. I don't think you cool. can milk a yak. There's no yak milk? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't sound good. You, you want some yak's milk? I've got some fresh yak's I mean... milk. The next question is, what is one thing that you wish you had contracted out? And I think we can both agree yep, 100%. that it's drywall. Drywall <laughs> is a huge pain in the butt. Yeah. It's the thing that is the most noticeable when you do a poor job and it takes so much time and it's so dirty and it's so tedious and it takes a lot of finesse. There is no other trade that I would rather subcontract out. I mean, even though plumbing took forever and we had to redo things multiple times to get it all to work, there's still like a point where after you're done, you're like, okay, now I can do it better or correctly or and it's differently hidden behind the walls. in the future. And with drywall, like no matter how much you practice, like we could not get any better. It was so difficult. <laughs> it's hard yeah. and I don't want to do it yeah. ever again. <laughs> the next question is, will you make a trip to Europe in the next few years, one to three years? I mean, <laughs> there's a long answer and a short answer. And the short answer is it is in the plans yeah. There's, a, there's a lot to work out, but it's in the plans. Within the next one to three years, we will absolutely be in Europe with Leo having fun. The next question that we have is, how is the mini split holding up? Now we got a Mr. Cool mini split for the sunroom. It was supposed to heat it in the winter, cool it in the summer. And let me just tell you, it does one of those things. And that is that it cools it in the summer, but when it comes to heating it in the winter, it does not cut it. It's hard, yeah. When it's below 20 degrees outside, which is about five months of the year for us at night, it cannot keep up. It is like 50 to 60 degrees in the sunroom with that thing going as hot as it can go. It's just mini splits don't work that effectively when it's super cold outside. So we even got a lot of comments of people saying, why are you gonna put a furnace or a shop heater in the garage? Just put a mini split. They do not work when it is that cold. Yeah. And that is just one of the downsides to mini splits. Our next question is, when the garage is 100% done, does the Tacoma Truggy build start right away? Do you know what a Truggy is? No, that's gotta be like a vernacular from a different country. It's not. It's not? No. Oh, you know what it is? Yeah. Oh, what is it? It's a truck buggy. So a oh. buggy is like an cool. off-road 4x4 vehicle that's just built out of a roll cage with a motor and axles. Nice. And then if you take a truck and you chop it into pieces and you build a roll cage around it, it becomes a truggy. And I just love that this person used this phrase or this terminology because like, <laughs> yes, that it is going to become a Truggy. That's like exactly what it's going to become. They already knew this by me explaining it. And I was like, oh, they're from the UK. That's like a word that we don't have here. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a word you're not familiar with. But uh, the Truggy build has already started. Like you guys haven't seen the actual video yet, but the build has actually started yeah. where we've started working on the truck and it is going to happen well before the garage is 100% finished. We gotta take advantage of these cold winter months. I need something to do through the winter. <laughs> when will you reveal the plans for building additions slash more room in the house? So a lot of people are always asking us constantly, where is Leo gonna sleep when he gets older? Like what is happening with your house? You obviously planned it so poorly. There is no space, it is not functional, and, and you are and they're, correct. They're right, yeah, those people are right. <laughs> so now you're right, we need to change the layout of the house. That is going to happen sooner rather than later, and I don't know how much we wanna give away here. The answer is we'll probably be revealing the additions within the next six months. Okay. But not anytime soon. Okay. We're still working on it. Stay tuned because it is gonna be really, really fun. Have you thought about building a sky bridge between the house and the garage apartment? And yes, Allie has brought that up 
yeah. at least a hundred times. Yeah, or like a zip line, or like a pulley system. <laughs> yes, definitely. I mean, there might be like an addition that has a deck that leads to the garage in the future. Dun dun dun. <laughs> but we don't know. <laughs> so another question that I know I saw a lot of is what is going to happen in the basement? Oh, that's right. So many people want to know when we're going to finish the basement, what we're going to do with the basement. And to be completely honest, the basement is like a cave. It is cold. Yeah. Like it is, an, it is a concrete box that's underground at the North Pole. That's yeah. exactly what our basement is. So it's an amazing place for storage. But once the garage is fully built, I think a lot of our storage is actually going to move out to the garage. Yeah. And then we may or may not be adding on to the house <laughs> for some more living space. So I, my dream or my idea of what's going to happen in the basement. It's a shared dream. We've talked about this. It's a shared dream yeah. is that we have like a exercise room yeah. where you can do yoga and there's like weights and maybe like hardwood floor with like some mirrors. And then we have like a sauna that's in the basement, maybe like a cold plunge or like something that goes along with, you know, that's all you health have. and exercising and stuff like that. <laughs> um, but until we build all of that stuff, it's going to be storage. And yeah. then when we build all that stuff, it's probably going to be an exercise room because yeah. the only person that could survive down there is me. And that's it's just because like, I like it when it's cold. It's really just like not fit for bedrooms and it's too far away from where we're sleeping for it to feel comfortable enough for us to put any kids down there. Joel has lots of options for where he would want to sleep. And if you wanted to sleep in the basement, he definitely could, but he doesn't want to. You live and you learn. Do you plan to travel as a family like you did before the baby? The answer is no. Because like no travel will be the same after having a baby. We are never going to take a baby to Mexico for three weeks and end up in Argentina a year and a half later? The answer to the question is no. We are never going to travel yeah. like we did. Yeah. Things are always gonna be different moving forward, but we do plan to travel with Leo and show him the world and show him different countries, but in the same fashion that we used to travel in, the answer is no. Yeah. Anyway, I think that has answered quite enough questions for today. We wanted to say thank you guys so much for joining us where we are just doing a Q&A, answering your guys' burning questions. If you guys have more questions, leave them in the comments and I'll yeah. jump in there and try to answer some of them. But we love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you show us by giving us a big thumbs up on today's video. Consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't already. Thanks guys, we love you. And we'll see you guys the next one. Adios. I don't know what it means, but there's a smile upon your face. And I see something shimmering in your eyes. And they say if you want to glimpse the future, you need space.